In a world where the majority of us are glued to our phones, I find a way to make reading books fun again, right? Let me tell you a story, okay? When I was a kid, reading was my world. I loved reading, I was addicted to it, I was a bookworm completely. I even spent hours in the toilet annoying my family but reading a book the entire time, just sit in the toilet, and it was just fun to me, right? It was a great life, I'd read books like, you know, Harry Potter, and books that you might not know as well, like Terry Pratchett, things like this, fantasy books, books about, you know, fantasy worlds and science fiction concepts and things like this. I'll be so excited to have this time in my day to read a book, even if it was on the toilet. Like, that's that's something that I did. I know it's weird to admit, but that's what I did, right? But then I grew up and things changed, right? I got a phone, a laptop, and these exact ones, right? I had, I had like a OnePlus 3, like a that was the phone I had, a Pavilion G6, like a, an old clunky laptop, but a laptop nonetheless with access to the internet, right? And that was a very interesting change in the things I had access to as a child, right? I remember when I was about, when was this? About 12, 13 years old, we were given an iPad by our school, right? And looking back at that, I'm thinking, what a dangerous thing to do, to give such a young kid something so powerful in terms of technology that they could access anything that they wanted to right it was just free reign it was an experiment that they had had given us to kind of see what benefits it would give the educational side of our of our growth right and don't get me wrong it, it was quite helpful in that side of things right it gave us access to a lot of good applications and things like that but then I was also addicted to a lot of things growing up, like, you know, watching TV shows and, like, games and things like this because of these technologies that I had access to, right? And it wasn't necessarily my fault, but I could, I might have been able to do something about it, and I have done something about it, given the fact that I live with these things today, I'm not as addicted as I was back then when I first was exposed to these things, right? And so there was definitely a lot of these things, watching TV shows and Netflix. I remember Friends was one of my favorite shows growing up as a teenager, things like that, and How I Met Your Mother and these kind of shows, and perhaps watching things that I probably shouldn't be watching at that age or ever. Uh, I think you know what I mean there. And gamings and things like this. Gamings? Gaming in general, right? Apps like Clash of Clans, one of my favorite games I've ever played in my life, but also games with like racing games, things like this, multiplayer online games, all, all kinds of games, right? All kinds of distractions that I had and all kinds of things that weren't necessarily the best things for me to be doing with my time, right? Where I could have been outside, outdoors, doing, you know, playing football or something like that, just actually doing something that, you know, kids in the, the 70s, the 80s, they didn't have access to any of these kind of things, right? Not a lot of TV shows, maybe one TV show on that one channel, right? Most of their time was spent outdoors doing things, right? Whereas in my generation, when we had access to a lot of technology, it was so easy for us to just like, you know, veg out in front of the TV, in front of the hundreds of channels that we had available to us and, you know, (laughs) software and places on the internet that weren't so, you know, legal or a bit dodgy to watch shows that we didn't even pay for, right? And so we had access to an almost infinite possibility of things to do online, so much so that outdoors weren't really a place that was exciting for us anymore. It wasn't really a place that we prioritized in life. And so that led to, sorry about that helicopter right side, that led to, let me just close the window. That led to a place where we grew up with some unhealthy habits in life, right? Particularly some of these a lot more unhealthy than others, right? And so the internet became to me this exciting place of such wonder, like, wow, amazing, all these cool things. And then books became a bit boring by comparison, like very understandably, right? You would think that to be the case. You would you would assume, obviously, if a kid has to choose, you probably choose the internet over a book, a boring book of paper and glue and leather, right? Obviously, the internet seems a much more exciting place to be and to gain any kind of input or media from, right? So I stopped reading for 10 years of my life, right? And looking back, that's kind of sad to me. Like, I just didn't input anything 
useful into my mind. Like obviously there was useful things on the internet, but I didn't spend time reading, spend time that was actually effortful and difficult in something that I found difficult to read and something that was, you know, a book, right? There's definitely something, there's some things internet, there's some things that the internet provides that is useful, but a book is just a different kind of experience that provides something different in a way that I might not be able to describe articulately in words right now. And that just makes me a bit sad, right? They didn't read for 10 years. But then I came back, right? Like a superhero coming back in a movie. I came back into the world of reading. And it was hard, right? I felt like this. It felt like, ah, these these books are so hard to read, right? And it will be at the start when you're starting anything, right? Even when you come back after a long time, if you've done it in the past, it will be hard. You will be a bit confused. You'll be like, ah, I don't have the patience to read this long. I I can't understand these words. I don't really, like, I find my mind wandering. I find myself getting distracted. And it's a progression you make over time, right? And so now, after that time period, I have become a bit of a bookworm, right? As you can see from the shelf behind me, I've got an entire shelf of books and you can't see in the camera, but in behind you guys in the camera, there's a shelf here, shelf here, a shelf under the table as well. I've got <laughs> literally hundreds of books and I read about 50 books a year on average. I'm not trying to like show off or anything, just to show like the progress of what I was doing and what I am at right now, right? From zero to 50 books a year, is a decent amount of progress. And that's a pretty good number, a decent number to be reading in a year, right? So it's around about a book a week, right? And so, yes, I'm addicted again. And that's a good thing, right? Addicted usually associated with bad things, but when it comes to books, that's definitely something you can like tick off your, you know, series of things that you'll be wanting to do, you've been wanting to do for your life, to be like an avid reader, somebody who reads books and gains intelligence like this. And so, we still live in the same world. So how am I doing that, right? How am I doing that when I have access to my laptop, my phone, and things like this that distract me all the time? How am I still doing that thing? And it's even worse now, right? With TikTok, with Instagram Reels, with YouTube Shorts, where our attention span is encouraged to be 60 seconds long, or even less than that. Like how often do you actually watch the full 60 seconds of a short or a TikTok, right? That has to be a really good TikTok, right? To watch the whole 60 seconds of it. Usually it's about five seconds. If that, three seconds, you scroll past it. Tap, 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 scroll, scroll, scroll. That's how much our attention span has worsened to this day. As well, That's why I don't encourage at all apps like TikTok and Reels and Shorts. Like, Yes, they might be useful in some scenarios where you can you know, watch a short and then be guided towards something that's a bit more long form, but... In general, I can't really recommend it. Like we lived life perfectly well before shorts came along, before TikTok came along, right? And so I have a tough time recommending things like this, right? And so in this world, I'm sat here chilling, reading a book. And I love this image, right? This picture for me, and when I see this kind of picture in like movies or books and, you know, people like this drawing itself is a symbol of like, just peace, right? I'm just with my book in a meditative state, just enjoying my time with that book without anything distracting around me. The fact that I'm reading a book means that I have found some peace. I've gone somewhere where, you know, maybe people won't disturb me, maybe I'll, I can just relax for a bit and read a book and be at peace with myself, right? That's a, a sign of like, it's a good image to me. That mental image to me is like, ah, oh, That's a good thing. That's something I can look forward to, right? Something good in my day, right? So how did I do it? That's the question you're asking me right now. My name is Dylan Alexander, and today I'm going to teach you what I learned in that process after 10 years of not reading, coming back into it, right? 10 years. As an adult, coming back into reading books, how did I do that? Because it wasn't easy. I'm not like some kind of like book genius or whatever. It took some time for me to come back into it. Like I didn't just automatically buy dozens and dozens of books. I just kind of felt like, oh, I stopped reading. I don't have any books. Right? And I would talk to people and have to admit I don't have any books. I'm like, oh, that's just, that's a bit not good, right? And I came to a place like this with all these books over time. 
it wasn't overnight. I wasn't always this person, right? I became this person over time, right? So this brought me to a place where I was no longer addicted to my phone, right? And this is what I'm going to teach you today, by the way. I'm going to teach you methods so that you're no longer addicted to your phone so that you can enjoy reading, right? Eventually. I know reading to you right now might seem like a, a boring task, like something that's just like an insane feat of effort to do but I'll teach you how to enjoy reading and therefore be able to train your brain for success over time because the more books you read the more information you input into your brain the more useful information you input to your brain the more the more primed for success you will become in life right that's what I've gathered over the, the course of time that I've used and utilized in reading books and gathering information for me okay so let's get into it and we're going to teach, I'm going to teach you with our philosophy, right? The fact is, in our philosophy, we don't want to be like everyone else. We don't want to be sheep. We don't want to be NPCs. Because the average person, guess what? They don't read. The average person, guess what? They're on TikTok, right? They're on Instagram. They're on IG. They're on YouTube Shorts, right? They're just watching these endless things and they're not reading. And their lives aren't something that we want to end up at, right? The average man is, like we have in this corner divorced, obese, and less than 1K in the bag. We don't want to end up like that in life, right? Because we're bad at relationships, because we're bad at diet, because we're bad at exercise, because we refuse to stop learning. That's what these people do. We don't want to be like them to refuse to learn things that we can learn in life, right? We want to be thinkers. We want to be thinking outside the box and learning things as we go along and going out of our way to go and get books and go and get knowledge and seek knowledge and propel ourselves forward and slingshot ourselves into a future that we want to live. So this is the person that we aspire to be, a thinker, right? And for that, we need to be someone who is different from the average, right? We, we don't want to be like everyone else. We don't want to follow the crowd and be like sheep or be like NPCs. That is not what we aspire to be. We want to be different. We want to be thinkers, right? So I'm going to guide you through this in two steps, right? The first, I'm going to take you to six steps that has helped me in general in life and six steps I've kind of condensed my philosophy of reading down into to help you in that process. And secondly, we're going to go through a Q&A for the questions that you guys have asked me and submitted to me. And by the way, if you want to submit me some questions, the first link in the description will take you there or the pinned comment, but more details about that link later on. So the six steps include these things, right? Some intriguing titles. Why read in the first place? I'm going to talk about dopamine detoxing, which is something that's very, very interesting. It spans across multiple areas of life, not just reading. Fiction versus non-fiction books. The logistics of reading. Actually learning what you read. And some other methods to do with just kind of knowledge input or reading in other ways as well. Right? So, the first one. Why read in the first place, you might ask. That's the most important question in this whole list. So let's start with that. So we have elements of wisdom, art, and growth in general, right? So think about that first one, wisdom, right? Books, generally speaking, when someone has composed a book, right, they have taken their life's wisdom, right? The wisdom that they have accrued across their lifetime, right? They spend years writing this book, right, to be condensed into an experience that lasts a few hours. It takes a few hours of time for you to read, right? Think about that. A lifetime of knowledge spent a few years crafted into an experience that will take you only a few hours to read, right? The most successful people in life are usually the books that we derive this knowledge from as well. So it is the condensed wisdom of the successful that you're reading from. And to think that you can access this for some very, very, very cheap price. You don't have to pay for some online course. You don't have to pay for some, you know, coaching material or some coaching program. You can buy it for around, you know, £10 or $10, right? And that's on the more expensive end as well. Some books are like $5, $4, right? For $10, you can buy this person's experience of life, right? Put into this one book. And, so for, and when you describe it that way, 
it becomes a no-brainer to buy books like this and to, to read at all in life. You're reading the condensed wisdom of the successful in life. And if you want to be like them, if you want to emulate their process and how they live life and how they've found success, then you must read their books. Right? That's the the cornerstone, like the baseline, the foundation of what it is to gain knowledge and to pursue something that you want to be. Right? To have this person as a role model of something that you want to be. Right? Read their book. Right? And so in that way, I'd like to at some point write a book myself and, you know, hopefully people will be inspired to become someone like me at some point, right? Maybe when I'm older, I'm more successful and more kind of, you know, someone who people might look up to at some point, right? And worthy of writing a book in the first place. And then there's the meditative state of reading a book. Like I talked about earlier, when you're reading a book, you know that you're at peace, right? Because you found a place where there's quiet, there's nothing distracting you, and inherently it brings you to this place where you can just sit and be with you right being with yourself is what meditation is having a quiet moment with your own thoughts and with your own physical sensations that's what meditation is to be in a meditative state right and so to puzzle out the the information from a book or the story of a book is something that really brings you to that core of peace and to be with yourself in that moment, right? Be with the here and now. Instead of worrying about the future, worrying about the past, being in the here and now and being able to live in that present time without being distracted, without allowing yourself to be distracted and without allowing for external factors to come into your world and kind of ruin that process or like chop it up, right? And so you give yourself a time to, you know, spend 10 minutes reading half an hour reading, two hours, three hours. That might be seem that might seem like a long time, but that can be a period of time in your life. Right? And given that peace, you have that solitude, you have that reflection, you have that internalizing moment. I talked about this in the previous lecture that I gave about emotions, right? About having alone time. Reading is part of that alone time as well. You have that peace, you have that solitude, you have that kind of Method of just being at one with an activity. Being in the zone, right? People often describe this with sports as well, with basketball or swimming, just being connected to the activity they're doing so strongly that there's a a sense of serenity, of peace, of just single-mindedness, right? And it's a very, very powerful feeling. And you often get that when you're reading a book. And appreciating the art right? There's an art to storytelling. There's an art to writing a book. There's an art to articulating an idea in a certain way using certain vocabulary that is pleasing to the ear or pleasing to the eye, pleasing to the brain when you read it. When you read how someone's written something down and thought about that process, you get an idea of who they are as a person. When you see how someone writes, you get another facet of who they are as a, as a person. Like someone, we used to write a lot of essays at university and so We'd often give our essays to each other to like read through and like kind of, you know, proofread it and make sure it made sense and make sure it was, you know, as good as it could be. And one person said to me, I'd like to read your essays. I'd like to know how you write because, you know, it tells it tells you about the person when you know about how they write. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. That's I, I think that's very true. Right. And so by appreciating that facet of who they are, you can appreciate what good writing looks like, right? This book is well written. Do you know what that means? Right? Do you know what it means when something is badly written? To know what that means is a facet of appreciating the art of writing. There's two sides to this, right? There's reading and there's writing, right? And so in reading, you get to appreciate the art. And then through that, if you write anything, right, and you should, by the way, in journaling and just writing down your thoughts in general, you become more of an articulate person. Your skills in critical thinking become boosted, right? And that's a very, very powerful skill, critical thinking, right? And so this is all part of the process of appreciating the art of reading, the appreciating the art of writing, right? And so in general, 
it boosts you up. This is the direction it takes you in, right? It slingshots you into the future where you are better than you were in the past. Let me just spell this correctly. Future, this is your past, right? And it's a very much exponential gain over time, right? It really skyrockets you into the future of success, right? Like generally speaking, the more you know, the more you know what to do. And the more you know what to do, the more successful you become, right? And that leads me to the next step, which is dopamine detox. How do we get into a place in the first place where things don't distract us? What does dopamine detox even mean? Let's get into that. So dopamine detox essentially means when you get rid of the things that are overstimulating in your life, right? Or try to do them a bit less, right? So in this topic, I'm gonna to talk about tech elimination or tech production, maybe. <laughs> Please delete TikTok and nature. Okay, I'll talk about TikTok and the details about that when I get to there. But firstly, tech elimination, right? So we are often addicted to our phones and our laptops and our tablets, if you want to include that as a category. I'm going to include that in the laptop category, right? I want to talk about this today. There are plugins we can get, certain apps that limit us using certain apps on our phone. So maybe you want to put the plug into like YouTube, if we're addicted to YouTube or any other app that you want. And so it can work in a way that kind of blocks you from YouTube in particular times of the day, right? An app I like to use is called OneSec, okay? It's spelled like this. Very good app. It's essentially, it gives you a timer when you go onto the app, right? So if you go onto YouTube, it says, okay, I'm gonna make you wait for 10 seconds, right? And it's, it gives you a prompt. It says, okay, why are you opening this app? And it make, gives you a time to think about it for 10 seconds or it might prompt you to just breathe for a second, right? And that 10 seconds, it eliminates the impulsivity of clicking on the app. Civity of clicking on the app, right? It makes you question why you clicked on the app in the first place, and it's one of my favorite apps. It like It's unique in the way that it works, and it just, it just works, right? That also has blocking capabilities, which I use as well. So some certain times of the day, I fully block YouTube. Right, the first six hours of the day for me until lunchtime, I block YouTube. And after 6 p.m., I block YouTube because I don't want to be watching that kind of stuff or watching anything before I'm going to sleep. Right? So, one sec is the app that I recommend if you want to go the plug in route. The second mode is airplane mode, or well, the second method is airplane mode, right? Airplane mode means that there, there's no signal coming into your phone, no Wi Fi no calls, like no data or anything like that, nothing or notifications at all, nothing coming into your phone, right? So you can be in a distraction for your environment and just, it's a, it's such a useful thing to use these days. You can just press a button on your phone and you'll no longer have anything distracting you, nothing, right? My phone is on this mode pretty much all the time, right? I think right now, if I look, it's off right now, right? If you can see that, I don't know if you can see on my phone. Oh, it's turning on. I didn't mean to do that, but it's usually on airplane mode if, if it isn't off, right? And that brings me to the second bit. Off is like a level up of airplane mode because if you pick up your phone, if pick up, right? Then you realize it's off and you'd be like, oh, it's off. There's a reason it's off. So I'm just gonna put it back down, right? Kind of eliminates that process of being distracted by your phone, right? And a plus one to that is putting it away, right? So I can get my phone and put it in a drawer, right? And it's out of sight. Or I can put it in a bag, or I can put it in a different room. Different room is a really good one, right? Putting it downstairs, charging your phone in the kitchen, right? These methods, although you really, like convincing someone to do this, is particularly hard because they're very addicted to their phone. Like I guarantee you right now, you're thinking right now, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to charge my phone in the kitchen. But if that's what it takes, then you'll be willing to do it. So are you willing to do it? That's up to you to answer, right? So plugins you can use, airplane mode, off and away as well. I use all four of these in life and they all work to varying degrees. The best, the absolute nuclear lockdown is all of them at the same time, right? Turning it off and putting it away so that you're not distracted in life, right? 
Similarly with the laptop, there's some plugins you can use with the uh, your browser on your laptop. There is, I guess there's airplane mode on your laptop as well. You can turn it off and put it away as well, right? Laptop's a bit different because you tend to be in a more productive zone when you're on your laptop, right? But if you want to read a book, put the laptop away. Close it, shut it down. You won't be, you won't be tempted to open it otherwise, right? And put it away if you need to, right? Okay. Generally, what we want to do in life when we look at dopamine detoxing is decrease our screen time and increase our non-screen time. What's non-screen time? Being outside, right? Going for walks in nature, doing something like like reading a book, right? So the more non-screen time we have, the more time we have to do things like this. If we prioritize these things in our day, they will become the things that we do, right? Reschedule your day, right? Put these things in there. I have a schedule that involves a walk outside. I have a schedule that involves me reading my book. Like that's, no, that's not a joke. I actually schedule that in. Right? It might seem overkill. It might seem like, you know, I'm a prisoner to my schedule, but that allows me more freedom because I know exactly what I'm going to do at that point in the day. I know that I've got it checked off. I don't have to worry about it anymore, right? And that's a general idea of a dopamine detox. If you want a definition of a dopamine detox, it can pretty much be summed up in this slide here. Dopamine detox, detox, right? Less screen time, more non-screen time, right? That's how I would summarize it. In, in reality, it might be more complicated. And I don't know if dopamine detox is even a scientific word. I think it's made up by certain people on the internet, but that's what it is to me, right? Having less screen time and more non-screen time, right? And if you have screen time, if you need to have the screen time in your day, if you have to kind of like, oh, I must watch something in the day, then do less of these activities, the, the less of the short form activities like TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts, right? Less of that, reduce that over time, right? And do more of these longer form activities, right? Like podcasts, like long form YouTube videos, and even just scrolling through like your phone photos, right? This is something I do a lot and people don't really recognize as a, as a wholesome activity to do. Have a look down memory lane, right? That is a more productive thing and definitely a dopamine detox thing to do way more than scrolling through TikTok, right? Go down memory lane, have a look at photos, have a look at this, okay? I recommend this as one thing to do if you're on your phone and you're bored, right? Go on your photos, pick today's date, Right, today's date might be 16th of May, right? Go back and look at 16th of May last year. 16th of May five years ago. 16th of May ten years ago. Right? I bet you'll be surprised by what happened on those days. The photos you have saved from those days. And in most photo galleries, you can type in 16th of May and it will show you every 16th of May from the start of your photo album. Right? Especially if you have a cloud-based album, you can search it very easily and have a scroll down memory lane. All these things I would recommend as very, you know, relaxing and peaceful and more dopamine detox type activities that you can do rather than these short form activities like TikTok, like Instagram Reels, like Shorts, right? You want to do more of these and less of these, in my opinion, right? That will kind of train your brain to be more of a, hmm, or less triggered or less kind of addicted to your phone and less addicted to, to screens in general, right? And if you're gonna say TikTok is useful, then in my opinion, you're addicted, right? Because look, yes, it might be like 1% useful, but it is 99% garbage, right? It is really honestly full of trash, right? It's, it's there's, there's things in there, even if it was more like 50-50, right? Even if it was more like 50-50, there's some things in there that will ruin your brain, right? Turn your brain to mush like this. Generally speaking, the people I see in my life who watch a lot of TikTok, they're not, like, I don't see them becoming successful, right? They're just kind of stuck in this kind of like weird childish zone in their life where they're just like quoting memes to each other and just like, like, there's fun in that. I'm not gonna say there's, that you can't be successful if you quote a meme ever, but if you're gonna do that all the time, like how much of your time is spent doing that? right? 
That's the question I want to ask, okay? And that's the question of how successful you're going to become, okay? So just be careful. I'm not saying you can't ever do it ever. Be very careful about that. And in my mind, I would eliminate it entirely, right? Because even if it's 50-50, there's always like a lot of garbage in there. And why, why do that when you know you can pick a book which you know is gold all the way through? Right? That's the kind of mentality to me. If you click on a video that's long form and you know it's gold all the way through because you know the guy and you know that the guy teaches in a way that's like, like hits a nerve with you and really, really helps you learn in the best way, why not watch that video? Right? Instead of trying to find the perfect TikTok and scrolling through and when you find it, scrolling past it. Yeah, giving it like, oh, that's funny, haha, <laughs> scroll past it. That just seems a bit like strange to me. It's weird. It's not normal, right? So for me, TikTok doesn't seem to be going in a direction that that I would ever recommend, right? So I can't recommend it. Okay, that's just that's just. I know it seems harsh, but I can't recommend it, right? Maybe place limits on it. If you absolutely want to use it, maybe thirty minutes on a Saturday, for example, right? And then block it, like I talked about earlier, for the rest of the week, right? Figure out a way to do that. Right? You guys are intelligent enough to find a way to block it so that you're only allowed 30 minutes on a Saturday. right? Or 30 minutes per day, for example. Or like maybe 10 minutes per day. 10 minutes per day. right? You can work that out. right? If not deleting it entirely from your phone. right? Go outside. right? That's part of the dopamine detox as well. Doing those non-screen activities. Look how wholesome this family looks. right? A mother, a father, their kids in nature, in the greenery, amongst the trees, you know, teaching each other about things and just talking to each other. And do they have their phones with them, by the way? This is a no phone environment, right? So when you go on your walk, don't bring your fucking phone with you, right? Or at least if you want it for like emergencies or whatever, like turn it off, okay? You don't need that with you. You don't need to take pictures, okay? Like maybe one time, go take pictures, but then every time you walk that route, just enjoy that moment, right? You know you have a photo of those trees over there. Just look at it now. Don't look at it through a phone screen. Look at it with your eyes, right? Look at those horses. Look at those sheep. Look at those geese. Look at the nature around you and have that moment with other people if you're with people, right? Do that thing. Go outside and just enjoy life. There's more to life than a phone screen. It's more to life than a a laptop screen, right? And yes, it's great you're watching this long form content right now, but even after this, right? Don't what? Don't like binge all my content in one day and spend twelve hours inside. Watch one or two, and go outside and live the rest of your life, right? Like that. I know that seems like counterintuitive to like my business and what I want to do, and like. Yes, I do want you to watch more of my videos, but I also want you to be healthy. That that comes before. That that's more priority to me. I want to help you be the best that you can be. Right? I'd rather you learn my stuff little by little than just binge my content and spend a whole week indoors. Right? I care about me, you more than I care about the views of my videos. Okay? That's reality. So We don't want to be like most people, right? We don't want to be like them. We want to be like these people, like this wholesome family, right? Oftentimes, I just think, what's the more wholesome thing to do? It seems like a silly question. It seems like a, you know, a hippy-dippy kind of question to ask, but it generally works, right? Like if I spent two, three hours scrolling through Instagram on, on the toilet, is that more wholesome or is it, more wholesome for me to go on a walk outside, you know, go see the horses, go see, you know, go for a walk and, and then, you know, go call my mates and, you know, go bowling or do something outside. Like what's more wholesome? Like, and that becomes like, that is obvious to me, right? <laughs> Obviously the toilet Instagram session is not wholesome and the other thing's wholesome. And so it becomes obvious what I should be doing in life, Right. But quite often, we don't do the things that we should be doing in life because we don't prioritize it. We don't think about it. So think about it. Be a thinker. Don't be a sheep. Don't be an NPC. Think about what it is that you should be doing in your life and go and do that thing, right? Don't be like most people, right? 
we want to be the different people, right? Like, even if the world became, like, the world is becoming a place where everyone is like this. Even if we're, like, the 1% of people who are, like, weird and different and actually go outside, be willing to be that weird and different person, right? That's, like, the whole point of my philosophy on this channel. Be the thinker. Don't be the NPC sheep. So the next step, part three, fiction and non-fiction books. What's the difference here? Fiction is for, non-fiction is for, let's answer that question, right? Fiction. As I talked about before, the art of storytelling. Not just writing this time, but storytelling, right? There's writing and there's storytelling, right? There's separate kind of things. They kind of combine in a certain way, but storytelling in itself is an ancient art that we've had for a very, very long time, right? There's creativity and imagination towards it, like this kind of Game of Thrones kind of fantasy world where there's like wizards and warriors and archers. They're very similar. Have you noticed that? Right? Whatever the fantasy world is, there tends to be a troll character. There tends to be an archer. There tends to be a wizard, right? There tends to be a dwarf, right? Why is that? There must be something there that creates a good story right? For some reason, right? Us people like a story that involves these kind of characters, whether it's Game of Thrones, whether it's Terry Pratchett, whether it's Lord of the Rings, whether it's The Hobbit, right? We tend to enjoy those characters. Why is that? That's interesting, right? And we've been telling stories for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, right? Look back at these cave paintings, right? These were the primitive forms of stories that we told way back, a long time ago. And this is the primary method that we used to pass down knowledge, right? Because think about it. How else would you pass down knowledge? If you didn't have any textbooks, if you didn't have any like, you know, written language, how would you pass down knowledge, right? And even the Bible is a series of stories that we learn from, right? Depending on your religion, or if you're Christian or Hindu, like whatever you believe, the Bible is a book of stories that teach lessons, that give knowledge, right? The moral of the story is this, right? Or this character shows this quality. And things didn't go well for this character when he did this, right? There's a, a series of events that lead to certain places and it comes to a conclusion that teaches us something, right? And that story gives us knowledge, right? It's like the ancient way of passing down wisdom. And it still works to this day. And there's a reason why we care so much about stories in our lives. Right? Yeah, the moral of the story is. Like, we expect that when we hear a fable, right? Like, for example, those, those fables that involve animals. The most famous one being the hare and the tortoise. Like, we all know that the tortoise wins the race because the moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. Right? There's like a, a little lesson that we can learn there. A little kind of a bite-sized chunk of information that we can bring to this life. Right? From the story. Right? And listen to this quote here, right? Tell me a fact and I'll learn. This is one of my favourite quotes, by the way. Tell me a fact and I'll learn. Tell me the truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. Right? And that is true for people across the world, for humanity in general. Stories are something that we just connect with on a better level than anything else, right? And a good story, we know it when we see it, right? These films, right? The Lion King, The Godfather, we just know. They're just generally accepted as good films because they have a good story, right? That's the part of it. Knives Out, this is one of my favourite films by the way. Knives Out, incredible film. The Fight Club, Hercules. Each of, the, each of these movies, by the way, you recognise they have a certain message, right? A certain underlying message that is told with the story, right? And we remember the story and we remember the message because of that good story. Right, Hercules is about like a, a coming of age story. Fight Club is about masculinity. You know, The Godfather is about, you know... Well, I'll be honest, I haven't seen that film yet, so I can't say. But The Lion King is about, 
you know, coming back and, you know, restoring family and, you know, knowing about what's important to you and about family and about, you know, that kind of sense of duty and things like this, right? And so we might not consciously be aware of the message in our brains, but through the story, it kind of it goes in without us even being aware of it. So what about nonfiction, right? Nonfiction is more about the raw knowledge, right? It's more about telling you, okay, two plus two is four, and like, you know, basic things like this without necessarily telling us the story with it, right? right? There can be true stories, right? Yeah, it's like this, right? It's like a teacher in front of a classroom telling you exactly how to do things, okay? Step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this, right? That's what nonfiction is, really, right? And as I said, there can be true stories that are told that are technically, I guess they come under nonfiction, but they might be a separate category. You might regard them as a separate category, you know? Films like The Pursuit of Happiness, for example. A true story, but also a story, right? Not necessarily a an explicit lesson that they teach you in this movie, right? So, moving on, step number four, logistics. That basically means what is the the way that we can make reading more convenient in our lives today? Let me just take a sip of water because I'm a bit thirsty. Okay, logistics. Okay, so in logistics, we have the, you know, the chapters of making time, reading speed, enjoying reading, and even skipping chapters, right? I'll come to that in a bit. You might think, oh my goodness, skipping chapters? How could you, right? We'll come to that when we come to that. You have got to make time in your day. You've got to set aside a time in your day, even if it's a schedule or something like that. I have a block of time in my day right before I sleep. Okay, I, I have sleep here, like if my day was like, you know, along here, I have sleep and right before that I have read, right? So for like an hour or so, I will read my book. And that, for me, the reason I read before I sleep is because it helps me sleep a lot, right? It helps so much for me to sleep. And I love unwinding with a book. It's one of my favorite things to do. And that's just when I read. I can recommend it to you, but you don't have to do that. You can read first thing in the morning, you can read at lunchtime, you can read when you're eating a meal, you can read at whatever time of day, but choose a time and make time for it, right? Make time, right? And think about how powerful that is, by the way, right? You're creating time, right? But in reality, you're carving out a point in your day which is unequivocally, like, indisputably your own, right? So you've got to make time for this. There's that not, not, that's not something you can negotiate, right? It's not a negotiable part of this process. You have to make time. Right? It's not like the TikTok thing where you can argue, oh, it might be useful, it might not be useful. This is not negotiable. You have to make time. And reading faster, okay? I like to have the physical book and have the audio book, right? You might choose between either one. You might like audio better. You might like the physical work better, but I like to read both of them at the same time. And that, why am I talking about that? It helps me read faster, okay? I can read certain books up to three times the speed, right? And on, on the Audible app, there is like a, a speed booster, right? So it goes times one, and there's several levels between that, and then times two, several levels between that, and then times three. I think it goes all the way up to times four. But I think the limit for me, times three or 3.5, something like that, right? So certain books, I can read at this speed, right? But I would be careful about that, okay? It's not something that you want to use all the time because, yeah, careful. I've got a slide in there just to say careful. Fiction books in particular, right? You don't want to blast through a fiction book. You want to enjoy it, right? So just read it at the normal speed. Read it at times one speed, right? Because that's the, the speed at which the, the narrator has narrated the book, and that's... It generally seems the most appropriate speed. If I ever increase the speed of a fiction book, it's because like they're reading really, really slowly, and I might go times one point one, right? Times one point two, something like that, right? Very, very small increase in speed. And even then, if I'm tired, 
I'll put it back down to times one, right? It's the nonfiction that you might want to speed boost, okay? And even then, if you're enjoying the book, then read it at times one. You want to enjoy the book for longer, right? But if you want to get through it faster, if you just want that knowledge right now, right here, then you can increase the speed, right? Times two, times three. My recommendation is to slowly increase it over time. So even in one single session, you might start at times two and increase it every little increment. So every minute, let's say, you increase it by 0.1 of a speed boost and then get to times three. And see if you can understand, test yourself. Right? See if you can understand what they're saying and actually follow along with what is being said in those things, right? In that book. Yeah, you can't force enjoyment, by the way. This is a, this, this is a separate point, actually. You can't force enjoyment, okay? There's a distinction between, there's, there is a distinction to be made between enjoy reading, okay? Like, it's like a command. You must enjoy reading versus reading what you enjoy, right? Can you tell the difference there? Think about it for a second, right? Picking the right book, choosing the right book. Oh, I can't spell today. Choosing the right book in the first place is half the equation, right? If you don't enjoy reading a book, then put it down, pick up something else, right? Especially at the start, when it's hard, when it's difficult for you to start reading again after so long not reading. Pick something that you like reading, right? Understand the difference between I enjoy reading and I read what I enjoy, right? There's a distinction to, to be made there. And cover to cover is also a method that I don't like to encourage in every single book, right? Especially nonfiction. I'm talking about nonfiction here, by the way, just to be clear, okay? If there is a chapter in a book which you feel like is completely boring to you, right? Then skip it. Skip that chapter, right? If you feel like you've learned about that lesson already in life, skip that chapter. If you feel like it's completely irrelevant to you, then skip that chapter. If the chapter is talking about how, you know, native Indian mums can, you know, cook their certain native dish better, right? And you live in the UK and you are like a white male 30 year old and you would never even think about doing that or you don't even care about doing that, then skip that chapter, right? If it's irrelevant to you, skip that chapter. If you don't care about it, skip it. If it's boring, you skip it. If it's just, you know, nothing to you, skip it. Like, there's plenty of books I've read in life where I've skipped the majority of the book and still learned a lot from it, right? A classic example of this is, one sec, let me just get a book. This one, attached, right? I learned most of what it had to say within the first like chapter or two. The rest of it was just a bit of gobbledygook to me. It was like, oh, he's just like showing me examples and showing me like how it manifests. I'm like, okay, I get the message, okay? I can just take that forward from here, right? And this book, like literally, do you see that bookmark? That's how much of it I read. And that's, that's a tick for me, that's done, right? I, I skimmed through the next chapters and I was like, that's all I can learn, okay? It just, it just seems to be repeating itself. Not to say it's a bad book, not to say it's a bad book, or that it will be the same experience for you. You have to see that for yourself, right? It might be useful to you, right? And it's not a bad book because of it. So the last, no, not the last, the fifth step in the six steps is actually learning, right? And that comes into it, right? Skipping chapters is like, am I actually learning from this chapter or am I not? Right? So, talking points here. Taking action as soon as possible. The good shit sticks. Does it apply? Right? Is there one thing I can do right now? If you've read something and you're like inspired to like the end of the universe, you're like, oh my goodness, that quote is amazing. That lesson is amazing. That's something that really applies to me. Do something right now. Do something. Is there one thing I can do right now? Even if it is to pen it in your calendar and say, okay, here's what I'm going to plan for this day in the future. 
It might not necessarily be doing that thing, but it is planning to do that thing. Writing it down, sticking it on your laptop, sticking it somewhere that you might see it, putting it on your wall. Doing something right now where it puts it into action is such a pivotal step when reading a book. It changes you from someone who just reads just for the sake of reading and reads to slingshot their life into the stratosphere. Okay? Is there one thing I can do right now? Do it right now. Don't wait. Midway through a chapter, put the book down to do that right now. Because, because you will forget. Because you will, you know, find another excuse not to do it. Okay? But the second thing here is you can get overwhelmed by all the things that you watch, all the things that you read, and sometimes you don't get the chance to like do everything right now as soon as possible, right? And so you have to wait for it. And you're overwhelmed because of it. There's, there's too much information, right? What do you do then? You're worrying about like trying to write down everything, write down every set, so your calendar's full and your note app is full and your, your, your journal's full of things that you just kind of like, when do I get to use any of these like 1,000 principles that I've just learned? Don't worry too much, okay? Here's a quote from Tim Ferriss I like a lot. The good shit sticks, right? Meaning that the good lessons to learn in life will stay with you, right? So you don't have to worry. There's going to be something that floats to the surface as something that sticks out above the rest, and that's what you'll remember, right? And for this season in your life, that's all you need to know. You don't need to know all the rest of it just take care of what is what has come to the forefront of your your brain and your heart right now. It will stick with you. If it's that important, it will stick with you. And if it's less important, it might not. And that's okay to let that piece of information go in the back of your mind somewhere that it might re- resurface at some other point. That's okay. Right? Take action on what means most to you right now and let the rest go. Because, as Tim Ferriss says, the good shit sticks. Okay? And does it apply to you right now? Right? Does, is, is this something that actually will give you something tangible in terms of a benefit to your life right now? Right? Like I said before, is it going to be talking about some, like, I, an example I talked about way back in an early video was, like, a documentary about the fish market in Taiwan, right? When I'm living here as, you know, some... 24 year old brown guy in the UK who's never been to Taiwan doesn't eat fish and doesn't care about that kind of stuff anyway like does it apply to me no it might be interesting but it doesn't apply to me right so if I actually want to learn something from it then I have to choose the books that you know that apply to me that actually contribute something to my life right it might be a book about YouTube it might be a book about teaching better it might be a book about how to use different methods in in teaching right that's what might be relevant to me in an obvious way there might be other things as well but that's the most obvious things i can think of right now if it doesn't apply then that is purely entertainment you must understand that and it's a distinction to make right it's okay to have entertainment in your life it's okay to watch that documentary about the fish market in taiwan if it's entertaining to you but understand that it is entertainment and not education it's not like it might be educational entertainment but it's not relevant to you it won't help you learn right here right now okay it is entertainment if it is what was the question again does it apply if the answer is yes then you are actually learning right so that brings me to the last of these steps step number six that is other methods that are beyond reading right these include things like movies, online courses, long form content like this video and podcasts, right? And you might think movies, come on now, movies are not a productive thing to watch. But as I mentioned before, those movies mean something to a vast proportion of the population. They have meaning, right? And that is far greater than the meaning you can derive from all this kind of short form content. There's a very, there's very much a lack of meaning here. There's no meaning here, almost at some points, right? There's some meaning, but the meaning you can have in a 60-second short 
is far less than the ones you can have in a one hour movie. Right? The stories told here, they mean things. Stories that we've had as an ancient tool to pass down knowledge across hundreds of thousands of years, that means something to us. We can never discount that. Right? So watching movies is definitely a better thing for you to do than watching a 60 second, you know, TikTok or whatever, right? I often enjoy watching these kind of Disney films or Studio Ghibli films that they just have some kind of meaning to me. I understand their entertainment and I watch them for that purpose and they give me meaning. They give me something good in my life. Online courses, right? Online courses that teach you things. And by the way, online courses that I offer for free, right? I have a an academy or a, a community page called Thinkers Academy and it's free for a limited time. So go and go go and go go and click that link in the first the first thing in the description and the first pinned comment below to get that right now okay first link and pinned comments more details later okay add long form content like the video that you're watching right now Whoa, I'm stumbling a bit today at the end of this video so my last video one hour 40 minutes right so I'm gonna highlight that one hour 40 minutes right long long videos that People have taken time to create this long form content that is genuinely more supportive and more educational than these less time, less, less kind of time intensive videos, right? And my last video as well about being a carnivore, all these things, and not just from me, from other people as well. Long form content tends to be better. Classic, classic example of this is Charlie Morgan, right? Long form videos teaches you a lot about making money. Right, great videos and podcast. Right, this podcast in specific is a very good podcast. I I listened to how long ago was this? Across the last week, really. Right, it took me like a week to get through this because it was so dense and so long, four hours long. Honestly, it's a very, very, very worthwhile watch. There's such useful information in here, especially if you're in a similar situation that I'm in and you want to start a business and you want to grow a business and you want to kind of do the things in life that lead you to a place where you're successful in the business world, right? Amazing knowledge put and condensed into this one podcast and it's such a lovely listen to, right? It's amazing to watch and listen to, right? That's my recommendation there. There's other things like Joe Rogan, things like this. I think they're a lot better to listen to than, as I said, the shorter form content that you find on TikTok and Instagram. And that is everything. Thank you very much for watching. But there's more. Wait, hang on. There's a Q&A section, okay? So if you want to submit answers to that, to that... Oh, goodness. I'm really stumbling at the end of this video, aren't I? If you want to submit your questions to the Q&A section, there is a community page that I've talked about before, Thinkers Academy, and it is genuinely free for a limited amount of time. And when you get that free price, you lock that in for life, right? That will be $0 for you per month forever. You have to pay nothing, ever. So if I were you, I would join now. It's a no-brainer to join now. Go check now. If it's still free, click join now. Otherwise, it'll be too late because it will go up to one twenty nine a month and that will not ever go back to being free. Okay? First link in the description, as I said, and the pinned comment below. And so you get to this page, click join group, and then you're in, right? And bonus content, online courses, right? As I talked about before, I've got my carnivore diet full guide. I've got a gym course I'm working on and some like more about mental health. And I'm sure there'll be more about reading and things like this, about learning quicker and things like that down below. And so to gain access to that for life, for free, click that right now. You'll be stupid not to at this point by how much I've kind of given you as content here for free, for free, really? So if you've enjoyed this so far, click on that. You'll enjoy so much more, so much more effortful content and so much more, you know, in-depth guides, complete like 10 hour long courses as to how to do something in life. If you enjoy these videos right now, you'll enjoy that so much more as well, right? But more about that later. So the Q&A section, okay? Three questions in one here. What do you do to put down your phone and read? Okay, 
So as I mentioned before, I use things like airplane mode, turning my phone off and doing things like this. What I usually do is I have a, I have a certain time of day, right? I have a time of day before I sleep, I just, I lay down and I get to reading, right? I turn everything else off and so there's nothing else for me to do apart from my book that's on my kind of bedside table. I picked it up and I read, that's it, right? I've kind of give, get into, I've kind of gotten into the habit of it over time just because it's something I do every day. It's just a habit. And so it becomes something that's easy for me to do, right? How do you not get distracted? Well, in a similar way that I just, I put my phone away, put my laptop away, there's nothing else around me to get distracted by, right? I might often get a wandering thought every now and then. It's not as if I'm like completely zoned in every single time. There might be a wandering thought. Then I have to kind of like, you know, go back and read the paragraph again. That's about it right? And you get better over time, right? It's not as if I kind of like, I started in this way. It was definitely a lot harder. I'd have to read a page like 10 times because I get distracted so much. But now it's better because I do it more. And that's just a a lesson in life. You get better at things the more time you give to them, right? Where do you find time in your day to read? Right before I sleep, right? And it can be other times, right? When I'm traveling, when I'm on the bus somewhere, when I'm on the train somewhere, I like to bring a book with me, especially when I'm traveling. It's such a, there's huge like time sinks when you're traveling, when you're at an airport waiting for a flight, whether you're on a train traveling somewhere further away, like there's hours away. And if you want something that's a bit peaceful and a bit like more minimalistic, instead of getting your laptop out and all the the headphones and the mouse and the keyboard, something a bit more minimal, it's just a book to read, right? It's very, It's a zone of peace in what can be a very chaotic world of traveling. So that's the third question answered. Okay, cool. What's the best book you've read this year? This is a very difficult question to answer because, man, it really makes me think, right? But I have a few books down here that I'm going to show you guys. If we're talking fiction books, right? There's this book that I've read. In the past year, I read this in September, so I don't, I'm stretching the term year here to mean like the last year in general. This is a book called The Fifth Elephant, right? Terry Pratchett book, very excellent author if you want to get to, into his books. He's written a series of books, but this book is a book that's in a series. So I, I can't exactly recommend this as a standalone book for you guys to read. So I'm going to recommend another book instead. And it's a book I don't have a physical copy of, but I'm reading an audio book right now, recommended by Tim Ferriss, to mention him again. And he recommended a book called Little Big, right? This book is one of the most complicated books I've ever read in my life, right? It's so hard to keep track of what's going on because it goes, it travels through time, backwards and forwards in like when the character was a child, when the character is an, ad- an adult, when the the grandfather was a kid, or it was just like, like these insane, like, I can't even tell you what the story is about because it's so bizarre and complicated and it doesn't really, it's about just the life story of certain different people and it kind of goes to a certain place, but it's written in such a way that it's like, for some reason I want to read further, right? And so it comes into that category of like what good writing is. Even a boring seeming concept can be an exciting thing to read, right? So with that being said, that's the fiction done. Uh, a book I read recently in the non-fiction section is 4,000 Weeks and How to Use Them. Right, 4,000 Weeks. This is about, in the average lifetime, we have about 4,000 weeks. Right. It's by Oliver Berkman. Oh, Little Big. Little Big is by, oh, I can't remember right now, but you can search it up and you find the person who's, who, who wrote it. 4,000 Weeks and How to Use It basically about how life is limited and to enjoy it to our max we must relax (laughs) and rhyme things apparently and enjoy living in the moment instead of worrying too much about the future worrying too much about the past and the methods that we can use to kind of go about that right he isn't exactly a productivity guru or anything like that he's just a journalist who goes through life writing books and writing things in general And so he has little bits of, you know, lifestyle advice that he has gained for himself. And so 
reading about that is certainly it certainly was interesting learning about how historically um people were given a lot longer holidays than we are now and people gave themselves a lot of time off and people even people now go out of their way to simplify their life so much that it seems boring but they seem to be happier in life right it's an interesting concept to think about in general so i'd recommend that for that purpose four thousand weeks and how to use them the second book is story worthy right this is a book that i've returned to many many times because it's such a good book in terms of knowing how to tell stories and knowing how to engage an audience and i've been particularly interested in that because i'd like to get better at engaging an audience on this platform here and also in telling stories to friends and family things like that it's been such a journey reading that book and i've i've yet to get all the way through it because it's so condensed and deep that I'm like trying to learn each lesson as I go along and I don't I want to stop myself before I get too overwhelmed by all the lessons that it involves but it's such a great read it is it is in itself a good story to read as well because this guy Matthew Dix is the author of this book by the way he has like won awards for his ability to sort tell stories right so excellent book that I can recommend for you guys and one book that I gifted to a friend of mine is called Happy by Darren Brown it's one of my favorite books in the world probably my favorite book ever if i can have a favorite book ever right happy by darren brown go look that up it's a very good book i talked about it in the previous video i recorded the one that was one hour and 40 minutes long so if you want to hear more about that perhaps go watch that video as well i think that's it only two questions today oh yeah fiction non-fiction i talked about that already and that's the end of the questions so yeah i promised you some more details so that community page free for a limited time as i told you free for life it's going to go up to 129 what is it it's an exclusive community page with live calls a high value community network one-to-one -one coaching and online courses okay that's what you're going to get video in the about page includes all the details so if you before you want to join if you want to look at the video and see what it's about then have a look at that and of course there is bonus content available on there that won't be available anywhere else on youtube instagram or tiktok or anywhere that you might be able to find my videos it's only on there. So click on that now. You'd be stupid not to. It's a no-brainer. Go click right now. Go check if it's free at least and join that because it will be worth 129 when I make that 129, right? It'll be worth way more than that. It'll be worth thousands, but I will sell it to you. I will give it to you, gift it at that cheaper price. And if it is right now free, get on that right now because it's it's. if I had access to this kind of thing for free, I would absolutely hop on it right now. Like, no question, right? So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I genuinely believe that these tips will give you something to kind of grasp onto when you get into that mode of reading. And I genuinely hope for you that reading will become part of your life. And at least you gain one lesson from this, which is to be more in the present moment and more doing things that is non-screen time rather than a lot of screen time, okay? Live in the real world, read real books, and I hope this video has helped you in your life today. I hope the best for you. With that being said, thanks for watching, and I'm going to say something that we say at the end of every video. Knowledge is power, and the power is yours. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in a bit. That was good. Nice.